Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. The internet is angry about a son's math test that was posted to Reddit mildly infuriating. Here's the question. Write an addition equation that matches this multiplication equation. 3 times 4 is equal to 12. The student has written 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 12. This would seem to be a valid addition equation that matches the multiplication equation. But remarkably, the teacher has marked the student's response as incorrect, and the teacher has written 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 12. On the surface, the teacher's response looks crazy. I read through many of the comments through many different posts where this was shared online, and I wanted to give you a summary of the many angry reactions. The most common reaction is that this teacher is just bad. Everyone was sharing stories about a time where a teacher had marked something they had wrong and the teacher stubbornly wouldn't admit their mistake. These memories last with us for decades and decades and it brought back a lot of angry responses. Other people were saying that this is why people hate math. When you have a children's test and you have some arbitrary rule, it just seems that math is mental abuse to humans. Other people were pointing on the mathematical fact that multiplication is commutative. 3 times 4 is of course equal to 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. It would seem the student's equation was valid. What was wrong with that answer versus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 12? Other people said that this is not a question about math at all. This is a question about ambiguous directions and ambiguous definitions. Why would one convention be more important than another? That's not what math is about. Math is about problem solving and conceptual understanding. There was also a small group of people who said they understood what the teacher did. They understood why the teacher marked it that way but they still didn't like what the teacher did. It was just a wrong question. Why is it even being asked in school? It's just ridiculous. So primarily, almost everyone thought the question was stupid and the teacher was wrong for marking it that way. I hope I've summarized many of the main responses, but if there's a response I didn't summarize, please share your feelings in the comments. It would be very easy for me to criticize the teacher and just go with the flow. But one thing I felt just as an outside observer who had no dog in this fight was that this ultimately was a math question. So I saw people were bringing a lot of feelings to a fact fight. So let me just lower the temperature and let's start on some common ground by looking at the facts. So let's start out simple. If a student writes 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 12, that's obviously a true equation. The same thing for 4 plus 4 plus 4 is equal to 12. This is correct. Now instead, suppose a student is asked to represent four groups of 3. Then if the student writes 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, that is obviously a correct response. What if a student is asked to write three groups of four and gives the same response? Would this demonstrate an understanding of three groups of four? No, this answer is wrong. Three groups of four would be represented as four plus four plus four. This would be the correct answer. So I hope we are on some common ground that we can agree upon all of these facts. Now let me get to a part that could be more controversial or we could disagree. It has historically been a convention and it is definitely a convention and a commonly accepted definition in America that you can represent four groups of three symbolically by multiplication. It would be represented as four times three. Three groups of four would be represented symbolically as three times four and only the second characterization is a correct way to show three groups of four. So if you wrote three times four and put three plus three plus three plus three, 
that would not demonstrate an understanding of three groups of four. A part of me thinks if this was a universal convention that everybody was taught in school and understood, then this problem would have never gone viral. The teacher's marking would just follow from this convention. But obviously many people have never heard of it. So I just want to give evidence that this standard is being taught in schools and it has been part of mathematical history for over 2000 years. So let me just start out with the concept of multiplication of whole numbers. In the official common core standards for mathematics, here is the official standard for multiplication. Interpret products of whole numbers. For example, interpret five times seven as the total number of objects in five groups of seven objects each. This clearly states that five times seven will be five groups of seven objects each. So this will be equal to seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. This is not just something in the standards, it's actually being put into textbooks. So let me show you an example. Here is Khan Academy's video about multiplication and they show that if you have five groups of three acorns, that'll be five threes, which is five groups of three. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. That's equal to 15. And this can be written as five times three. In the next video, which talks about multiplication as repeated addition, an example is shown that four times three will be four groups of three. Three plus three plus three plus three, which equals 12. By comparison, three groups of four will be four plus four plus four is equal to 12. To give further evidence, this very example was in the entry for Wikipedia's multiplication. A times B is equal to A groups of B. They had written in Wikipedia that three times four is equal to three groups of four. Four plus four plus four is equal to 12. What luck that you would have exactly your test question written in Wikipedia. By comparison, four times three is equal to four groups of three, which is three plus three plus three plus three. Now, nine months ago, I made a video about this very type of question about why certain things were marked wrong. Perhaps because I made this video, it drew a lot more attention to this entry and someone actually edited out those examples in Wikipedia and put in this long paragraph with some sources I don't really think justify what they're saying. But in any case, this is what's written in Wikipedia now. Nonetheless, if you just go by the definition that's given here, three times four would be equal to four repeated three times. So that would still be four plus four plus four. And I ask you, if you were to teach eight year old students, would you rather teach them some clear definition, some clear concept that you would ask that they understand? I believe this is how math was traditionally taught. Or would you instead give them a long paragraph about what's ambiguous or not? I do think this is how math is being taught today. It's up to you to think which is more suitable for eight year old students. Now, while people can edit Wikipedia, they certainly can't edit texts that are written thousands of years ago. So here's looking at you, Clid. A number is said to multiply a number when the latter is added as many times as there are units in the former. Apply the definition to three times four. Four would be the latter number and three would be the former number. Therefore, three times four will be equal to three groups of four, which is four plus four plus four. And this isn't just some tradition that Euclid put down and nobody followed. Here's an example of Euler's text about algebra. And he specifically says that a plus a is the same as two times a, a plus a plus a is the same as three times a, a plus a plus a plus a is four times a. So it is clear that two times a would be two groups of a. So this tradition has lasted for thousands of years. It's something we still continue to this day. It's not just a completely crazy convention. So now let's go to the actual math test. Before we get to the student's response at the bottom, let's take a closer look at the question right before it in this detail that's cropped right at the top. What happens if we try to zoom in on the question right before it? What do we see? We see that the student has written 
four groups of three is equal to 12, and this represents four times three is equal to 12. So if we have three plus three plus three plus three is equal to 12, that's the same thing as four times three is equal to 12. Now let's go to the question that we are discussing. In comparison to four groups of three, four times three is equal to 12, this question is asking for three groups of four, three times four. But amazingly, this student has written exactly the same answer. So it would seem pretty clear why the teacher would say, this is going to be a different answer. In order to demonstrate that you know three groups of four, you should instead write three groups of four, which is four plus four plus four is equal to 12. So anyway, this is just how I, as an outside observer, looking at the details of this test, would try to understand what the teacher did, and that's how I would rule on this question, that I could see where the teacher is coming from. But I also understand why people were very angry about this question if they've never heard of this convention or they don't think it makes any sense. At the heart of this question is a larger question. Is it okay to define a concept and test students specifically on that concept? Should that be something that's done in math class? I personally do think that definitions are very important and inside a particular framework, I do think it's okay for teachers to do that. But many people would disagree that you should only teach concepts that make sense. And if a school is teaching something that doesn't make sense, the teacher should actually go beyond what's in the textbook and understand what the student is doing. But what is a student to do practically? I think there is a way that we can all get along. For me personally, I would always follow the rules that were in school. If a teacher told me to do a problem a particular way, I would go ahead and do that. I would learn the material I needed to, and I would score well on the exams. But I would then consume all of the mathematical educational material that I could outside of school. I would take courses outside of school. I would be on the math team. I read every single book that was in the library, and now I watch a whole bunch of math videos, and I thank you for watching math videos to enrich your life. And my favorite part about making these math videos is I get to hear what you think. So what do you think about this math test? Please share in the comments section. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.